Hello and welcome to a special streaming parson video. Today we are beginning our Christmas Advent as today is December the 2nd and I am going to do something for you guys as we build up toward Christmas. <clears throat> so I've mentioned this a number of times, especially for those of you who've been following some of my videos, uh, my more recent podcast and upload videos of my love of D4DJ or Dig Delight Direct Drive DJ. It's weird that I started with the shorter one and then went to the longer one after. But anyway, and I've mentioned this several times in probably all of those videos where there's this funny kind of dissonance between Groovy Mix, which was the mobile game, and All Mix, which is the second season of the anime. And so what we're going to do for the month of December, before as we build up toward Christmas, is I'm going to take all 12 episodes of All Mix, and we are going to dissect... Well, one, I'm going to give a little bit of a commentary of All Mix... Because it has been a while, I mean, this the series has been out for basically almost a year. And yeah, sure, there's tons of people who've already done reactions and whatnot. But I think we're going to take an interesting analysis of All Mix and see those contradictions between Groovy Mix and All Mix. So every time I make that statement from here on forth, I can actually back that up. There is There, there are actual inconsistencies between the two. And so... This uh, this video project that we're going to be doing, we're going to go through all the episodes and talk about all those inconsistencies. And so, with that said, let us dive into the first episode. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to poke at here, we're already starting off strong, I see, but it's not so much a contradiction, so it's kind of weird that this is our first stop. And the first stop is, I've always made this weird observation as I've watched through All Mix, and this will come up from time to time, but, you know, Groovy Mix has established that basically the Lyrical Lily Girls are basically celebrities at this school. At least you would think that, because they're the only DJ unit that the school has as... Uh, if you go to the Road to DFES 1 in Groovy Mix, there was, it tells you the origin story of Lyrical Lily. And it started out as like they are kind of taboo because them playing like DJ music was apparently like violating the Christian school rules. <laughs> and so the, uh, the Lyrical Lily started out as kind of taboo characters and then later on they became when they got recognized and they were actually instead of getting in trouble for being uh, a DJ unit if you will uh, they are endorsed by the school and they're the school's official DJ unit so with that said that basically makes the Lyrical Lily girls by the way their names are uh, Miyu, Haruna, Miko, and Kurumi by the way with that said I'm going to assume you have some basic knowledge of D4DJ otherwise I don't see a lot of people clicking onto this being like I'm totally in the dark of D4DJ and so but I'm gonna watch these videos anyway I assume you guys have some kind of knowledge and I have uh, done a number of videos on D4DJ already so with that said with that said uh, I'm gonna assume you guys have some basic knowledge so when I when I refer to like certain groups I assume you know who the members are as I've already done the tier list video and the trope talk that you guys should definitely check out. I will definitely leave those descriptions in the leave those videos in the description below. But anyway, back to um, the episode itself. With that said, that the Lyrical Lily girls are basically celebrities as uh, they became the school's official DJ unit. 
it's one of those weird things where you see like a bunch of these random potato face girls go to school and then nobody just swarms the lyrical lily girls because once again they're basically celebrities i just found it kind of funny and like the for a little bit of context here uh, the episode begins at lyrical lily's school that's why i brought that up まさかうちの学院でDJユニットやることたちが出てくるなんてへえ世間で流行ってるものは何でも禁止なのがうちの学院ですのにどうしてリリカルリリーが活動が許されているのでしょう確かみんな笑顔にする帽子活動の一つということ
this is stuff that anyone who's played Groovy Mix has a lot of knowledge of, because Groovy Mix, this this exchange happens all the time, and the show kind of references that. The, there'll be a few of those, but I, I wouldn't really call them inconsistencies. This is more just world building for people who've never played Groovy Mix. So, this is one of those weird things that First Mix never makes reference to this. So, I, I'm not sure to call this an inconsistency. So, just to bring a little update, what happens is the, the Lyrical Lily Girls are being asked to do a revitalize the town uh, kind of event for a certain part of the town the certain part of the city it's funny that the wording of revitalizing the town is used because in groovy mix once again it's not it's like in in first mix and to my knowledge in all of all mix nobody mentions which city they actually live in although there's um, actually I don't think I don't think they even show you parts of there's no backdrop of in all mix that shows you what town they live in and but if you play groovy mix it is established that they live in tokyo and there is a backdrop used in groovy mix of the one oh the 106 being in the background when the uh, uh it's one of the just one of the backgrounds when the girls are in the city if you, when d4 dj characters are roaming around in the city uh, the 106 is present which is shibuya uh which is a part of tokyo and then of course in various events throughout the game uh, it is referenced that they do live in Tokyo which then makes me scratch my head a little bit where it's like what do you mean revitalize the town maybe they're just referring to like a small district kind of like how um, a lot of big cities have uh, you know like a Chinatown kind of thing it's like a small section of the city uh, uses like a heritage site maybe that's what they're talking about uh, the show's not particularly clear on this. So the the wording of revitalizing the town is a little bit weird. Uh. <clears throat> Another thing, too, that you wouldn't think that this is a small town with the opening of this show, even if you didn't know much of, like, D4DJ to begin with, but the fact that you had these girls go to a Catholic school, it would imply that they, they must live in a bigger place that would have these sp specialized schools. In most cities, or most towns, sorry, if you have a smaller town that only has like a few thousand people, there wouldn't be specialized schools. You would just have pub a pu the public school, and then maybe one or two, like maybe a private school among the public schools. But there wouldn't be like these specialized schools, like a Catholic school. That's only something that you find in like in actual cities. So the fact that um, I keep forgetting the name of the, it's mentioned at the beginning of the video. Uh, what school the Lyrical Lily girls go to, it's, it is a Catholic school. And so it's implied that they live in the city. Also, anyone who's played Groovy Mix would know this. Uh, all Mix doesn't reveal this quite yet, but you'll see it soon enough. Is that the Lyrical Lily girls are all rich. And, I mean, that's kind of evident with the fact that they go to a, a specialized private school. So it's kind of like a... That should be obvious. I just, I just find the wording of revitalize the town a little bit weird. Sorry my face covers part of the subtitles, but you can kind of figure it out. But they live in the big city. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
私たちだけで1年もやるの大変だよだって毎月やったら12回だよ毎回私たちのライブだと見に来た人もびっくりがなくなって飽きちゃうよそそれはそうかもしれませんねねえみんな思い出してみて初めて商店街のステージでイベントをやった時のことあの時も私たち4人だけではうまくいかなかったかもしれないでもみんなとだったら面白いかもそうですよね常に誰かに奉仕することを忘れない常に誰かに奉仕されていることを忘れない Okay, so <clears throat> the event that Miyu, this is where we're actually our first actual problem between Groovy Mix and All Mix, is that the event that Miyu is referring to, which he talks about how they quote unquote first performed, although that's technically not true either, but for the sake of what Miyu is saying in this scene, and she says, when we first performed for the city district, this particular city district, which I assume when they talk about like, uh, this particular part of the city it must be like a like one of the outskirt parts uh, I can't think of a good illustration outside of like okay so in I live in Vancouver British Columbia and of course Vancouver isn't just like Vancouver there's a bunch of um, parts to Vancouver you have um, North Van you have North Vancouver you have Burnaby you have Surrey uh, Delta uh, New Westminster and those kind of places and so maybe the part of um, Tokyo that the D4 DJ characters live in must be in one of the more outer parts it's not like the so the parallel with Vancouver it wouldn't be in the main like in Vancouver it'd be part of like I don't know maybe part of the tri-city of New Westminster or something New Westminster for reference if you look at a map of Vancouver New Westminster is actually a very small part kind of far away from the downtown core of Vancouver. So maybe that's where like D4 DJ it has like a equivalence in Tokyo. Although this place is not named. So uh, some fictional uh, suburb of Tokyo. Anyway, so the event that Miyu is referring to is from Okay, so anyway, I get a, bit, a little bit of backstory for this. So in Groovy Mix, as of today, we are we're still in the beginning of the third anniversary, the an the third anniversary event, which is the beginning of Volume Four of D Four DJ. And when I say Volume Four, basically you have to look at it like this. So when the game first came out, the first year is Volume One. Uh, then second year would be Volume Two. The third year, which we just uh, finished would be volume three and then as the third anniversary kicks off the beginning of volume four because now the game is three years old we're moving to the fourth year and started volume four so this is going to quite an event quite a ways back with the events of volume two and so the lyrical in volume two before the major event which is called d -Fest. They had a bunch of stories involving each unit called the Road to DFS. Well, in Volume 2, it's called Road to DFS 2, which is the event that Miyu is actually referring to. Now, Road to DFS 2 does have two stories in it, but the story of the Lyrical Lily Girls performing for the this town district and bringing attention to this part of Tokyo, um, this part happens... With, since this, since Miyu references that event, it's implied then that all mix, if you were to try and fit it in a timeline with Groovy Mix, but you're going to find out this is not going to work at all. If you were to, though, it would take place after the road to DFest 2. Of course, DFest 2 uh, in Groovy Mix, we're going to pretend. I, I might as well just kind of spoil it now. We're going to pretend that event doesn't happen, and we're going to kind of take. All mix as the replacement of DFS. However, we're going immediate, to immediately run into other problems. And this is one of the problems between, like, um, 
an anime that does what All Mix does, which is gonna be like, oh yeah, our t our twelve episodes is gonna span one year time, whereas playing Groovy Mix for three years now, the characters don't age, <laughs> and this is where you know I could get into like some weird cases where like, if you remember from my trope video, or my tier list. Uh, and, you know, making jokes about, like, Maho being, like, a sexualized minor. And, in theory, she's not a minor, though. Because if Groovy Mix has been out for three years and Maho starts at the age of 16, then technically Maho is 19 now. But that's not how Groovy Mix works. She's still 16, so time, in theory, doesn't move. Which then makes all weird things when you say, like, well, there's been multiple Christmas events in, in Groovy Mix. But, you know, weird time continuity errors like that and that's going to become a big problem which is another reason why we can easily kind of cut you know break apart groovy mix and all mix and look at their contradictions because here's here's going to be like a source of a lot of contradictions in that all mix is going to take place over a course of a year which is more time elapsing than the entirety of groovy mix's three-year lifetime so it's just kind of a that's that's the preface I wanted to go with and from here we'll be able to break more contradictions haha <laughs> fat girl talking with a mouthful so brute Okay. Ah, uh, yes. To anyone who's played Groovy Mix, you already know where we're going with this one. The big split is continuity issue between Groovy Mix and All Mix. And we're only seven minutes in the first episode. And we're already at this huge split is timeline between Groovy Mix and All Mix. And that is the fact that if you look at the back here, we have a character here. Her name is Irie. And Irie is actually an important character in Groovy Mix, especially now after the uh, the end of the third volume. But she had always been like a pretty big character throughout the entirety of Groovy Mix. And so, Irie being here in this scene though, is already just clear like, oh yeah, we're in a splitist timeline now. And that's because in Groovy Mix, Irie had actually left Cafe Vinyl. Actually, she's she's been gone for over a year in real time anyway. Uh, she's been gone for like a year and a half of real time, if not a little bit longer. And that's because in Groovy Mix, Irie is part of another DJ unit. So one of the major story events in The Road to DFest 2 is there's a legendary group of DJ artists and they're called the Call of Artemis and Irie is a member of this group and so as far as Road to DFest 2 is concerned Irie stopped working at Cafe Vinyl so that she could rejoin uh, Shano and a couple other characters who are not in All Mix or, or, or First Mix but Shano was in First Mix We'll talk more about her later. They, Irie had left Cafe Vinyl to reform the DJ unit that they used to be in high school, and now they're like women in their late twenties, uh, dominating the DJ scene. And then, of course, what all Ma or sorry, what Groovy Mix ended up doing was that after the band Call Artemis reforms, they actually uh, leave Japan for a while to do music training and uh, prepare themselves to be like a, sh a DJ unit and to basically take the world by storm basically and so for Irie to be here in all mix now we're working with a different continuity because now we have to assume that doesn't happen we have to assume that uh, Call of Artemis doesn't happen and before someone goes well technically uh, Call of Artemis 
could happen after. Well, the problem with that, at least as far as the All Mix's continuity is concerned, is that going back with Groovy Mix and when Ivy leaves Cafe Vinyl, her and Sh uh, her friend Shano, who's also a member of Call of Artemis, she leaves her job that she was in First Mix. And that event happens during the Photon Maiden Road to DFES. Uh, Road to DFES 2. And from a timeline sense, this Groovy Mix implies that the Photon Maiden one happens kind of early in the Volume 2 timeline, if you were to assume a timeline in Groovy Mix. But remember, Groovy Mix is cramming three years of content in less than a year, quote unquote, less than a year of D4 DJ time. So, uh, that, yeah, wrap your head around that. <laughs> and so, Irie being here is just a massive problem if you were to try to maintain some kind of continuity uh, with for, uh, Groovy Mix and All Mix. And yes, every time Irie appears on screen, I will basically mention that she is a problem and clear splittest timeline stuff in D4DJ. Can I turn this up a little bit? Oh, this scene. The risque scene. You might as well get out of the way, right? In... I'll just talk over the scene a little bit, because they're talking about deciding whether they should help Miracle Lily, which everybody does, because that's how the story progresses. Anyway, uh, in first mix, for those of you who don't know, and then at that point, why are you even here? Uh, go watch first mix. Uh, in first mix, there are points throughout that series where all the happy around girls uh, have a bath scene. And so, here you must just get out of the way, all the happy around girls in a bath scene, in all mix. Done. だから私は委員長じゃなくて風景委員です。ハピアラちゃんたちはみんな協力してくれるの。やった。よかった。それは大変嬉しいことですわ。でも1年間ライブをするならもっともっと多くの方々に協力してもらう必要がありますわ。Because Miko is a bit of a social butterfly if you've never played Groovy, uh, Groovy Mix. And you didn't know that. I mean, bubbly anime girls, of course you gotta have some social butterflies here and there. Otherwise, nothing would ever happen. <laughs> Referencing DFES, Road to DFES 2 again. <笑>そうね。私もそう思う。でも、1年間通してのイベントだから、私たちだけでは参加は決められないわ。スケジュールの調整もしないといけないし。わかった。マネージャーに相談してみるわ。どうだった。月1ならスケジュール的にも問題ないから OK だって。やった。第2回地域活性化イベントどうすればいいか。ですから私は委員長じゃないと何度言ったら。ほとんどみんなも協力してくれるの。やった。ハピアラ<笑> 
ットフォトンが参加してくれるってことならあのユニットも参加してほしいよね洋馬学園の数あるユニットの中でも D4 フェス出場経験があるハッピーアラウンドフォトンメーデンとくればピーキーピーキーそれなら私の出番だね All right, the reason why I paused it there is because if it, if it wasn't obvious, I am use I am directly just wow, real real. This is how you know like A grade you know fo uh, video editing skill and everything. I'm just directly using off YouTube. I am watching directly off YouTube. So anytime there's gonna be like ad stuff, I have to like watch for it and make sure I skip it. Don't worry though. I wrote tons of notes down as I was prepping this, so I know not to run too much into uh, problems with that. I'm also aware that uh, because I am using direct video of D4DJ, uh, I'm aware that this video is not going to be available to some parts. Uh, I ran into this problem with the Halloween video because I played a, uh, 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 some music videos. And so if you play music videos, you get like the whole copyright claim thing and uh, your video gets blocked in some regions. Uh, that don't have certain accesses and so I'm aware that I just gotta deal with that but um, if you're in North America you'll be you're, you're completely fine um, I think it's like Asia that has like the problems if you're I think if you're in Europe you'll be fine too when it comes to like you should be able to access all these videos anyway uh, I'm just gonna skip ahead to Oh, it says, pr uh, yeah, that says her name. And yeah, I like her pictures like a little prankster witch. It's kind of funny. あ、もしもし、いたずらっ子ちゃん。お久しぶり。うん、うん。え、そんなことやるんだ。で、私たちもってこと。一応確認するけど、ドッキリとかのいたずらじゃないよね。うん、分かった。それじゃ、みんなに
real life crammed in one less than a year in game universe but uh in if you were to put a chronological order because there was a there's actually seven stories in road to defense too one for the six major units so happy around peaky peaky photon maiden rondo mermaid and lyrical lily and then the seventh one was the call of artemis one as it tells the uh, the story of the call of artemis getting back together as i mentioned earlier and the whole irie being a massive contradiction but with the six unit the six other units uh it's assumed that the lyrical lily story takes place at the end of the timeline of the road to defest too because there are also like certain story arcs for the other groups that it's implied it already happened why well, I, I i just brought that up just to fill in you know do uh, fill in some of the gaps but basically um in road to defest 2 lyrical lily they they got help from a bunch of the other units they got help from happy around photon maiden peaky peaky and then the mer they got help from the mermaid girls but the mermaid girls were on tour they did a tour throughout uh japan and that was basically the main story of uh road to defense to mermaid so the mermaid part of that whole volume two storytelling happens before the lyrical lily one but anyway, Shinobu is just referencing that. And I had to kind of explain that in case you didn't know. Her voice is killer. So good. Because people in Deep or DJ have superpowers. Unironically. <笑>面白そうじゃん。やるやる。メンバー気にしなくていいって。じゃあ。今の電話さ、聞きの忍ぶからだったんだけど。え?リリカルリリーがやるイベントに参加してほしい。しかもマンスリーライトの1年通してや
the events of D4D just kind of collapse into each other. It's like, I've played this game for like two and a half years now. I played like just before the first anniversary. So a little bit, uh, just over two years, not two and a half years. Anyway, uh, We Can't Play It Alone came out in May of 2022. So that's actually quite a bit before Omics was released. And probably like, let's say a month or two before they started writing the script for Omics. The premise of We Can't Play It Alone is that Tsubaki and Nagisa, they get into a fight. And the reason why they get into a fight is because Nagisa, the, the thing that kind of triggers it is they're doing, they're, they're practicing as they would normally do, kind of like as you just saw. And Nagisa has this habit that while they're, even when they're practicing, let alone when they're doing a live show, Nagisa loves ad-libbing. Uh, guitar solos throughout the songs and normally like Aoi and uh, Hiro they're pretty good at just adjusting to Nagisa just ad-libbing during a song but when you ad-lib a guitar solo whenever you feel like it throughout a song it can throw off your singer and the timing of how a singer sings and their breathing and everything and so this is what kind of triggers it and Tsubaki gets like really upset with Nagisa and what you kind of what the story kind of gets at is that Nagisa has this bad habit of disrespecting Tsubaki's feelings not just professionally as musicians but throughout past events before um, this one the we can't play it alone event Nagisa kind of just decides things and then the rest of Rondo kind of goes along with it and then this kind of built up some pent up anger if you will in Tsubaki and so in We Can't Play It Alone Tsubaki kind of finally snaps out of her and is like you know you can't keep doing that you can't just uh, keep doing what you want and so uh, <clears throat> the rest of the story is about Nagisa kind of being introspective about her selfishness and learning to be more considerate not just of Tsubaki's ability to keep to keep up with her singing but also to be a lot more considerate of her feelings but of course in this as we just saw here in all mix I'm going I guess that event never happens uh, we can't play it alone never happens and so Nagisa just disregarding Tsubaki's feelings as she did much earlier in the Groovy Mix story, narrative, uh, overall narrative, because once again, Groovy Mix has been out for three years. So it was just an interesting thing to point out that, like, yes, this is an actual contradiction that uh, Nagisa is, is still the more um, careless and disrespectful even, uh, as opposed to how Nagisa's kind of warmed up quite a bit in Groovy Mix. I like how it's called Town Liddy. <laughs> because it's gonna be lit. Look at this sim. Okay, so we can just look at uh, uh, Haruna's panicky face because uh, she's being a massive simp right now. Because uh, once again, it's one of those if you if you play Groovy Mix, you kind of already know this, and it's kind of obvious that Haruna is like a massive simp for Aoi <laughs> of Rondo, and so. For her to be sweating like this is uh, kind of parkour, because she's thinking of you know, thinking about Aoi and Haruna is all the attracted to Aoi, which is one of those funny things you think about. Is like, wait a minute, aren't these like Catholic, uh, Catholic girls? You don't think that would be happening, but it's anime, all right. You just gotta go with it. Anyway, that's not the reason why I paused the video. The real reason, real reason I paused the video was just I just want to point out this weird wording here. 
at least in the subtitles uh, the subtitle says oh sorry was Miyu's maid uh, I found this translation to be a bit weird and of course one of the things too if you know Japanese the thing about like when you speak it like in Japanese um, time tense is not the same as how we use like in English so for example here saying sorry was Miyu's maid imply is past tense in Japanese something like if it was the past that would kind of be implied if it was actually implied but in as far as my Japanese is and I know a little bit not enough to you know actually have a real conversation with somebody but I know a little bit and from what I gather here the the tense of sorry is me use made there is no actual time tense. It just says that th that is the relationship that there's a, a a servant master relationship between them. Is kind of what the Japanese gets gets at. That sorry, as me who's made. But the weird thing about the the tense thing here is that in Groovy Mix, sorry is sorry is still me who's made. This is ne this is not changed at all in Groovy Mix, and there's no implication that anything ever happened. That uh, <clears throat> that would have me use or sorry that would have Sari stop being part of um, Miu's employ. As a matter of fact, uh, it's pretty like at least in Volume Three, it's pretty clear that Sari is still part of. Uh, Miyu's employ, or Miyu's father's employ, technically, because Miyu's Miyu's dad pays for Sari's flight, because <clears throat> he oddly treats her like a second daughter. <laughs> it's kind of weird, and so the the wording is the part that's kind of weird. And if the wording is implying that Sari no longer works for uh, Miyu's family, then that would be a contradiction, because in Groovy Mix, Sari still is, and there's no indication. That salary is gonna stop being me use made uh, in Groovy Mix. Also, that face. Also, this face. Oh, yeah. Harin is a simp for salary, too, by the way. She calls it her perfect. It's a professional admiration, but that's. She's a simp. By the way, this episode takes place in January. They must be freezing. Yes, with Mermaid, you're gonna get a lot of fan service. Deal with it. Never mind. <laughs> the subtitles did a good job to not make it as sexual as that sounds, by the way. <laughs> that's all that's all I'll say. You know, because that's Mermaid's whole thing. Yo, that's like a virtual whiteboard. They must live in some kind of advanced. I mean, people have superpowers in this universe, so I guess they also have advanced, more advanced technology than our own world.
Okay, so I wanted to stop here because this one's a pretty big inconsistency between Groovy Mix and All Mix. Uh, on the one hand, All Mix. So the the reason why All Mix has this scene, I guess, uh, if you've already if you've played Groovy Mix, you know where I'm going with this. All Mix has this scene. Uh, to basically do more world building, especially if you haven't played Groovy Mix, which yes, if it wasn't obvious, I will be making tons of those. Uh, I mean, that's the whole point of this video series. I'm comparing the two. Uh, although I am, I am gonna assume that you've have played at least a little bit, or at least you hopefully plan to uh, play Groovy Mix. And so, uh, this scene is very different. This scene establishes something very different from Groovy Mix's continuity, but in all, it, but I guess All Mix has a scene in order to world build uh, something about uh, Rinku's character that you don't, if you don't already know, from First Mix, and that's uh, the fact that in First Mix, Rinku does the whole giving a seashell to a new friend. That's basically Rinku's whole thing, and so. Here she ha she's establishing that she's friends with everybody uh, by giving them seashells. However, on the other hand, uh, all mix. Now, see, let's put it this way: if you only had gr uh, first mix and then all mix, it would make sense that like, okay, Ringu's gonna give everyone else seashells. Because remember, in first mix, the only girls that Ringu's ever given seashells to are the happy around girls. But then we run into the problem, is that throughout this first episode, we've referenced tons of stuff that's already happened in Groovy Mix. D-Fest has already happened. Road to D-Fest 2 has already happened. And so that's a, that's a lot of uh, stuff to happen between the end of uh, First Mix. Because the other thing too is that First Mix, we're just going to assume is the part before the branch. So if you were, since we're going to talk about like branching continuities, then first mix is the tree stump before you get to tree branches and so uh, <clears throat> this scene is just very bizarre if you've already played groovy mix uh, for starters every character present has already received a seashell from rinku at least it's well implied because uh, at the first defest that's when Rinku really becomes friends with everybody and she interacts with everyone. And so it's safe to assume that, well, the, the story implies it uh, in Groovy Mix because you know how Japanese, they, they don't just tell you flat out things. They, they let you uh, assume uh, things based on some implications. And that and one of those is that Rinku becoming friends with everyone at first defense, it's safe to assume she would give everyone seashells. And so for her to do it again here is kind of weird because she, if we, if we accept that DFES and Road to DFES 2 has happened as, this, as All Makes Episode 1 has clearly referenced several times, then that means Rinku has already done that. She's already uh, become friends with everyone and thus would have given them seashells already. <clears throat> then we get to this little tidbit right here. It was pretty quick. It was only a couple seconds. But it was the Nagisa looking at the shell, and then she looks over at Kyoko, and then Kyoko just, you know, nods and confirms something. <clears throat> this is a all. This is a, a huge contradiction. If you know, once again, because D Fest technically happened in the All Mix continuity, but uh, the first D Fest. So when I say D Fest, obviously I'm referring to the first one. When I say D Fest two, obviously I'm referring to the second D Fest. So. <laughs> In DFAS, uh, there's a character card, <clears throat> and it's called Winning Guitar. It's a Nagisa character card during the um, first DFAS event in Groovy Mix. In this event, Rinku meets Nagisa at DFAS for the first time. During this interaction, Kyoko reveals to Rinku that Nagisa was actually the person who made the seashell necklaces that the Happy Around Girls wear. Now, if you need that reference, that was in First Mix episode, uh, First Mix episode eight, which remember is true for both continuities. Uh, so, if Groovy Mix, once again, this is once where the whole like Rinku would have given everyone seashells already, and not to mention, 
um, Nagisa and Ki Nagisa would definitely already know about the seashells and that Rinku gives them out. Uh, because Kyoko had already talked to Nagisa. It's implied to, anyway, in first mix. Because Groovy Mix reveals that that is the person Kyoko went to. Nagisa is the person that she went to. So, then it begs the question, why would Nagisa act remotely surprised about the seashells when she should already know them and Rinku's tendency to give them out as gifts? So even if we remove the event of Rinku giving everyone seashells back at DFAS, as I suggested that it was, uh, D, uh, Groovy Mix implies that she de definitely would have done it. Nagisa would still know about the seashells, so her looking acting remotely surprised is just weird. Because she, even if even if this even if this event is the first time they actually get seashells, Nagisa would know about the seashells. She would already know about them, so that's why this is a huge contradiction. Um, against Groovy, um, Groovy Mix. Waffle. Awkward. Um, I'm just gonna put that away. I did not see. I did not expect that to happen. That that's not supposed to happen. Uh, let me just put this away for a bit. Uh, I try to avoid having these ads show up during the uh, video, but because um, YouTube is like that, I had a fail. I even I even attempted a fail safe as to. Uh, how to get around that but I'll have to fix this uh, fix my formatting after because I thought my, my, my original plan was gonna work but I guess it doesn't if that happens again I'll, I'll have to figure something out uh, how to get around that and I'm not paying for YouTube premium おしおを改めるにあたり私たちリリカのリリーを代表しましてうん兄ちゃん長いよ春菜ちゃんの挨拶はビデオレターでネットにあげれたしてダンスサヴェージ<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Okay, so actually there's another contradiction that I did not write in my notes, but I'm going to mention it here. So, when Miyu refers to Piki Piki as the undisputed champions, this is actually uh, an interesting statement for her to make. Well, technically, DFest 2 doesn't happen. So, in... I need to give some uh, context here. So in the first DFES event, after Peaky Peaky wins DFES, because that's what happens in the first event, Peaky, the DFES is also a music competition. And so all the units that uh, perform are judged to see who is the DFES winner, the DFES champion, if you will. And Peaky Peaky wins it. And then what happens is there's an after show, at the, like a closing ceremony show. And that's where uh, Mot, uh, Shano uh, performs, and part most of Call of Artemis is reassembled. And then they kind of do a, an ad lib song, and then that leads to um, Road to Defest Two with Peaky Peaky and um, Shinobu being super miffed about that, <laughs> and so. Uh, the interesting thing about that is uh, th you get to the second DFES and then Call of Artemis does compete in um, DFES 2 and then 
they become the champions. So, with that said, though, I'm pretty sure Shinobu here would not feel like they are the undisputed champions because she would have been pretty mid about the whole Call of Artemis thing. However, since Call of Artemis isn't a thing in this t continuity, we can imagine, although it would not make any sense with uh, any of the Road to DFS 2, that there was no after show of the first defense. This is all hypothetical. Uh, there's nothing to back this theory up. But it was just uh, something to point out that I thought it was interesting that Miyu calls them the undisputed champions. Because Shinobu definitely would not have felt that way. I gotta say though, with uh, these music videos, I try not to talk over them too much. But something to keep for you guys to keep your eyes peeled about is like, this is the people who animated this show are the same people who animated Guilty Gear, and so when they do these music bits, like I gotta say, like Arc Systems animators just hitting it hard with the animation. It's just so good, but of course the music is pretty great too. What her hat? What is that funky ass whimper sound? <laughs> that came out of Harana. How did she turn around with like the wire of the headset might get caught? That's shifty. This song is also a banger. By the way, I don't know if I'm gonna play this every single time. Uh, for every single episode. Because of course it's gonna eat a fair amount of time. And I'm gonna stop it there with the T pose. Cause yes, people like meme the heck out of the first season where in the in first mix, the end credit only had Maho dance for like an hour, a minute and a half. I almost said an hour and a half, a minute and a half. And then she T poses at the end of it. So I guess they made a nod to that again here with all the girls T posing. And so uh, cute way to uh, stop the frame. You can't see Shinobu cause my face is in the way. Sorry guys, but uh, <laughs> With that said, uh, I know this first episode is a lot longer, 
because I also had to like cover some bases of how this series is gonna go down. But uh, this is just the first episode, so we got we got eleven more episodes to go through as we count down toward Christmas, and so I am going to do these bi daily. I guess that's the the wording for it. it is bi daily where. I'll do it every other day and it conveniently works that it's going to be every even numbered day leading up to Christmas Eve and so uh oh I'm sorry apparently see I I, I don't I'm not going to video edit this so I'm sorry that there's people yelling in the background because uh people talk loud and I don't have like a soundproof door so sorry about that but anyway I'm going to do a bi daily uh, every even number day leading up to Christmas Eve, we will be continuing going through the entirety of D4DJ All Mix and pointing, nitpicking all these continuity errors because that is what I find fun. Uh, and, you know, be, me being overly analytical in storytelling and even in a cute girl anime like D4DJ All Mix. Anyway, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed my commentary slash uh, continuity continuity nitpicking of D4 DJ Omix and by extension Groovy Mix. And I will see you guys on the 4th of December with episode 2. Until then, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and God bless you.